Hi everybody and welcome to a brand new episode of Diana Ross's 12 best albums and my favorite and today we are talking about an album that could have been a blockbuster hit. It just didn't quite hit the mark but what a great album it is. It is the album Baby It's Me and what an album cover that is. Have you ever seen a more beautiful picture? To me, the greatest album cover that ever existed, along with, but not as equal, with the Cher um, album, Take Me Home. Those are my two favorite album covers of all time. And before anybody asks questions, why do I have a picture, um, a, a, a Cher doll with me? It's because there is a bit of a conspiracy theory with this album cover. Now, the album cover is... The photograph is by Victor Skebneski, Victor Skebneski, and um, he is responsible for some of the greatest Diana Ross pictures. This one, as well as um, this fabulous piece, and um, and the album cover, the black and white album cover for the album Diana Ross that was just prior to this one. Now. On the picture of this album, Baby It's Me, she is wearing a coat that is made of swan duvet, the baby feathers of the swan, and a satin gown which is cut on the bias. Now, she, before that album came out, um, hosted the annual Rock Awards. It was a short-lived award show. It didn't it, it, you know, it didn't last very long, but she hosted two of them. And the first one she hosted, she was wearing that amazing coat, which is bright canary yellow and a white satin dress. So everyone has always assumed that this is what she's wearing on the album cover. Now, the coat is that coat, but the dress, we're not sure, because some people say that um, she knew that the pictures that were taken in black and white, that's why we have no proof, were going to be colorized and so she borrowed the same gown that belongs to Cher in pink because it was easier to work on these pictures to colorize them and also the one in the white dress that Diana Ross is wearing has sequined um, straps and the one that she's wearing on the album cover doesn't so it's the same story as you know the dress that was black and gold or blue and white you know black and blue or whatever and so this is my conspiracy theory but it's a, you must admit a much more exciting gown so anyway that's why i took the the pink share gown um and the pink share doll uh which i love and that i have the diane ross ones which are by mago as well these are the very early ones and they have eyelashes real i mean you know real fake eyelashes now this album came out in 1977 and it was produced by richard perry and Richard Perry was going, loved working with Diana Ross, and he was working on a second album that he was going to produce. Now, Richard Perry is, uh, at the time, was known as what they called the hit maker. He made hits for anybody's album that he worked on, and whether it be Paul Simon, Leo Sayer, Tiny Tim, and then later on, but this is right after this album, his pairing with the Pointer Sisters, the three Pointer Sisters, um, which were uh, Ruth, June, and Anita, because Bonnie had left the group. And that's when the Pointer Sisters became world-renowned, that they had those huge hits. And the, uh, some of the tracks that were cut for the Pointer Sisters were intended for Diana Ross. So it's such a shame when you hear these things. But nevertheless, uh, Diana Ross was going into production for The Wiz. She was going to shoot the film and record the album. And so Motown decided to make her do a bit of work so that they could have some material to release. And they did uh, with this album, uh, which was intended as a love album. And then she also recorded Diana Ross Sing Songs from The Wiz, which was shelved for quite a while. I mean, actually 30 years, and then it came out recently. So this album, with this incredible album cover, um, has 10 songs and the choice of songs is magnificent. And why I love that Diana Ross works with a single producer is because they kind of 
become a barrier between her and Barry Gordy. They kind of take over and so it gives a lot of freedom to Diana Ross to choose her material to know what she's going to do. And so on this album the very first song is Getting Ready for Love which was issued as a single. It is a great song known as Barry Gordy's favorite song on this album and what a song it is. It's just not quite a disco song but it is a dance song and it was it had a lot of airplay it was played on quite a few radios and because the album came out first and no singles were issued for a couple of months uh, the radios just chose whichever song they loved so they kind of played the entire album depending on where you were and what radio you listened to getting ready for love is written by tom snow i don't know if i said and it is just beautifully orchestrated and just the kind of music I adore. Lots of violins, big production, but not over overly produced. And you can really hear Diana Ross's voice just soaring. And um, when she sings, oh, I'm flying, oh, I'm skying, you know that she's just dancing in that booth where she's recording. The second song is You Got It. It was also issued as a single. Now, these are the songs that I call the second songs on the Diana Ross albums. In many of her albums, the second song is a very quiet song where she just breathes the words, she's almost talking, and it's very sultry and kind of just, just dreamy. And uh, in the album Red Hot Rhythm and Blues, the second song is Stranger in Paradise, and it reminds you of this. And in the album uh, um, Why Do Fools Fall In Love, the second song is um, uh, Sweet Surrender. And it's that same thing. You hear a flute and she's kind of just relaxing and singing. And it's very Diana Ross signature type of songs, if you understand what I mean. And You Got It has it has it completely. I absolutely adore it. It's just a beautiful love song and it's just very sexy. The third song is Baby It's Me. It's the title song. I always thought that title for an album was a bit strange, Baby It's Me. And especially seeing that album cover, you know, you think that album should be called Superstar or Look At Me I'm Fabulous, but of course Diana Ross would never do that. But uh, Richard Perry chose it. He decided that he wanted one of the songs to be the title of the album. And he thought that this one was just the most evident one. And it just had something, a good ring to it. Baby, it's me. And it's written in tiny, tiny lettering when you see that album cover. You know, it's just so stunning. And um, uh, then Diana Ross sings Too Shy to Say, which is a Stevie Wonder signature. A magnificent song written for Diana Ross if you will it wasn't but it really could have you make me smile you make me sing you make me feel good everything um, and and I just too shy to say that I really love you I mean it's just things that Diana Ross you, you could hear her say that and um, she sang it in her Las Vegas concert you know the concert known as the concert of concert the one where She's all dressed in white and when she goes through the silver screen and uh, that's the, the first song that she sings after her, her entrance that she wanted um, quiet and uh, just a few home movies and a few Polaroid spliced together, you know, keep it simple and intimate as she says. Um, then a song called Your Love Is So Good For Me uh, is so good to me and it was also a single and um, uh, it, it's really a very sexy song and it a little bit fast paced and again all of these songs this album could have have included um, a Love Hangover it's really that type of music and I'm sure that Love Hangover having been her most recent hit and having been such a big hit it, it was immediately understood that Diana Ross had the sexiness in her um, because if you know, she was very, very um, uh, partial to singing Love Hangover the first time. She didn't want to. She thought it was not for her. And then they made her and then she really loved it. Um, so Your Love Is So Good For Me is that kind of song. It's sexy and she does those little, ow, you know. 
And then uh, the sixth song, so with side B on the vinyl, and the vinyl uh, came out as a reissue in pink, um, uh, uh, on a pink vinyl, very, very beautiful. The song is Top of the World, and uh, this song was issued as a single only in the UK, and in America it was just a promotional single. And this song, if you listen to the album Special Things by the Pointer Sisters, great album, one of my favorite non-Diana Ross albums. There, there is a song on it called We've Got the Power. And if you listen to both of them back to back, you will really, really know the, the style of Richard Perry's production. It's so typical. It's the same orchestration, the same type of music, the same way the voices are placed. Now, of course, the Pointer Sisters sing in a trio, Diana Ross by herself. And she can hold it because her voice on that album is fantastic. In the liner notes on the reissue, um, this album was reissued only digitally. Uh, so you can only find it on iTunes, but it is worth listening to because it is just gorgeous and packed with unreleased tracks and with alternate vocals and alternate orchestrations and Getting Ready for Love, the first song, has a different orchestration, which is so much louder. And you think, oh, they would have put that one on the original album. It would have been a huge hit. Um, All Night Lover is a song which is reminiscent of her Supremes days and of what she sang with the Supremes. Uh, it is a nod to the Supremes, according to Richard Berry. Uh, Richard Perry and not Richard Berry Gordy. Um, but uh, it's a, just a very cute song, very, very, um, uh, very charming. And Richard Perry loves these type of songs. And he produced for Diana Ross later on the single So Close from the um, uh, album Silk Electric. And it's, you know, ooh, 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 you know, very 60s kind of music. And so it's the kind of music he loves and probably the music he grew up with. So after that, Confide in Me is the first of two Melissa Manchester pen songs. And Melissa Manchester is, to me, a genius composer. I absolutely adore her. And um, I have every single one of her albums. And she writes and composes as beautifully as she sings and as beautiful as she is um, an artist. And... Um, I absolutely adore what she does, and I'm not surprised that Diana Ross was attracted to this kind of writing. And this is a woman writing, so, it, you know, confide in me. So this is mirrors a little bit, um, Too Shy to Say by Stevie Wonder, but it's a different way of saying, you know, confide in me, rely on me, and I will try to satisfy your every need. So, again, it's just so sexy and so sultry and... Diana Ross's voice is just like the album cover. It's just, uh, you know, femininity to the highest level. I mean, she is, you know, the definition of woman. And um, uh, the ninth song, the before last song, is the same love that made me laugh. And the words continue, makes me cry. A haunting ballad. And the orchestration has, again, very beautiful orchestration, but the violins sound very much. Now, this is just to me Middle Eastern because this is where I come from. And in Arabic music, we use a lot of violins, but they sound like this. They don't sound like the even in disco albums. It sounds like the classical violins, but they they have a different uh, tune to it and it's something very there's a lot of melancholy and very sad in the violin and it just sounds like that it could have been some this song could be sung in Arabic um, I don't know if that brings anything to anybody who listens to this but this is how I feel it and um, if you listen to the way the Bee Gees write their music it also reminds you uh, well reminds of anybody who's got the Arabic culture of this type of music but it's a haunting song and Diana Ross when she sings you know why you know uh, does the same love that made me made me laugh makes me cry it is a real cry from the heart and that voice comes out of 
well, it comes out of her, but it just comes out, it's very, very poignant and just beautiful. And the last song is again Melissa Manchester, this time with Carol Bayer Sayer, uh, Coming From The Rain, which was one of Melissa Manchester's greatest hits. But at the time, it was not a hit song. It was not known. So it really is not like a reprise. And Diane Ross sings it. I mean, all you want to do is just come in from the rain. This concludes this beautiful, beautiful album that should have been a blockbuster hit for Diana Ross. It is, in any case, a, a huge hit among her fans and among anybody who loves Diana Ross. And that is why I wanted to share with you this, which is really, truly one of my favorite Diana Ross albums. And I will see you next week with another Diana Ross magical album. See you Sunday.